Hey guys, it's Casey here again. If you've ever wanted to install individual throttle bodies on your Miata, then this will be the video for you. I figured I'd make a quick guide, essentially, on how I installed these GSXR 750 throttle bodies on my 1.6 Miata engine, and all the parts, and essentially the things that you'll need to do to set them up. Now, what this actually is, is it's a 1.6 Miata intake manifold that someone cut right around here, essentially, and then they welded an aluminum pipe, TIG welded it, at a sl slight little angle, going up this way, and then they silicone coupled the GSXR 750 ITBs, and then there's a little sort of aluminum piece that adapts the, the actual GSXR ITBs to this PX600 base plate with Weber 48 IDA velocity stacks bolting it all together, bolting it directly to the GSXR ITBs. Now, I'm not 100% certain how these aluminum pieces are attached, and I'll be figuring that out in today's video because I'm actually going to be making an intake plenum that goes over all of the velocity stacks. That way I can route boost into this intake manifold sometime in the future. Now, since it's a stock 1.6 Miata intake manifold that they cut, it still has the stock placement for the stock 1.6 fuel rail, the stock injectors, all of those things stock fuel pressure uh, regulator on the fuel rail as well and then it's running a, um, a GSXR TPS on the back of the ITBs where the throttle bodies normally run the TPS and the way I actually wired up this TPS was with DuPont cables because they actually plug directly onto the little TPS pins themselves it's kinda hard to see here but essentially these little DuPont cable if it'll focus, will slide or clip directly onto the end of those pins for that GSXR um, throttle position sensor. And since it's essentially a 5 volt throttle position sensor, it's the same as if you were wiring up like a like an E36 variable throttle position sensor, anything like that. I'll leave a pin out down below for the wires that I use to wire it up because it works perfect on my setup, and it was pretty pretty simple. Another thing that's mounted onto these throttle bodies is this uh, GSXR fuel rail right here with GSXR injectors. The reason I installed it was because there's actually, well, obviously there's going to be holes for the injectors in the intake, and if I didn't put that there, then there'd be massive vacuum leaks. I'd like to create some sort of a piece that you could 3D print to kind of plug all of those vacuum leaks rather than using this fuel rail, but for right now I'm just using the fuel rail to plug the vacuum leaks and you can get them off of eBay for super, super cheap. You can actually get the throttle bodies and the fuel rail themselves for super cheap off of eBay. Along with that, there are gonna be some vacuum lines that you've gotta run. So there's gonna be a vacuum line that goes to the brake booster, a vacuum line that goes to the fuel pressure regulator, and a vacuum line that goes to the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Now, the vacuum line that I did for the brake booster and the fuel pressure regulator is just teed off of this front intake runner. There's a little intake port. And then I ran it all the way to the back of the intake manifold with a vacuum tee that tees off into the regulator and then into the brake booster vacuum line. And then the manifold absolute pressure vacuum line is just going to be right here since the GSXR ITBs actually come with a port for all of the intake ITBs or yeah, for all of the ITBs to give you a vacuum signal. That way you've got kind of a, a stronger vacuum signal because usually ITBs tend to pulse with their vacuum and make it a lot harder to tune. But by having all four of them routed there, it gives you a little bit stronger of a signal. I actually got super lucky and I was able to acquire the cut intake manifold, silicone coupled to the GSXR ITBs with this little adapter, the P600 base plate, and the Weber 48 IDA velocity stacks. I managed to get all of those together, minus the fuel rail, both fuel rails, and my brackets that I created and such. I got all that stuff for 200 bucks, essentially. So the throttle bodies, the velocity stacks, the base plate, the cut intake manifold with the welded pipe, TIG welded, mind you, all for 200 bucks, which was a complete score, but it'd be super easy to replicate this yourself just by cutting a 1.6 Miata intake manifold and then welding some pipes on it at an angle and then essentially getting all of the pieces of the puzzle and piecing it together. For the PCV valve routing, I've actually just got 
breather filters, k and breather filters on there right now. I'd like to 3D print a catch can, but that's still in the works at the moment. For now though, these have been working perfectly fine, just having a breather filter on both of the vacuum ports on the valve cover. No issues so far. And then they're taking off for this video, but normally I'll run these Ram Air carburetor socks on the velocity stacks themselves just to protect them from water and debris and essentially anything getting into the engine. The brackets that I had to create to get this to work was a throttle cable bracket using the stock throttle cable and the stock throttle cable kind of bracket that mounts it to the side of the intake manifold. I essentially created a bent aluminum piece that bolts to the engine mount bolt on the valve cover, or well, the head essentially, and then it essentially just leaves the throttle cable directly to the throttle. And it does kind of look loose right here when you're doing this, but when it's the um, actual pedal pulling this wire, it doesn't leave any slack for the throttle. And then the other bracket that, you, that I had to create was an intake air temperature sensor bracket. Now this is super haggard, honestly, it's just a, a little T bracket with a threaded hole for the intake air temperature sensor. Super temporary, but it has been working so far. I'd like to create maybe a bracket kind of mounted to this base plate or somewhere closer to the actual throttle bodies, because the closer you can get that temperature sensor to the actual temperature of the air going into the engine, the better your tune is going to be. But for right now, this little bracket right here has been working perfect. And then you'll also notice that I don't have a carb canister. I deleted the carb canister when I was um, on my last kind of naturally aspirated setup. It's really simple and there's tons of videos out there, but you essentially just plug all the vacuum ports that would be going to the carb canister and then loop the fuel line that goes into the carb canister. Gives you no problems, no problems with emissions either because I've had to go through DEQ uh, in Portland with this setup and have had no issues. Not with the individual throttle body setup, but with my last uh, intake setup essentially. Just to give you guys kind of a rundown of what sensors are managing this engine to, there's a uh, GM one bar map sensor, a Suzuki GSXR TPS sensor, VTPS sensor essentially, and then there's a AM, AM, AM AFR uh, like 30x sensor, 30x gauge, whatever the recent one is. Just a, a standard AFR gauge, essentially. And then it's got a um, GM intake air temperature sensor over here as well. Stock dock coolant temperature sensor, stock oil pressure sensor, and then obviously the um, Toyota coil on plugs for the coils themselves. Figured I'd record a short clip of what the ITBs sound like cranking over and starting, since I haven't shown you guys that. So here you go. Starts up pretty smooth, idles around 1000 RPM at around 12 AFRs. Takes the AFR sensor a little bit to heat up. And you'll notice that the TACO output too is reading incorrectly as well. I've messed around with the Speedwino settings to try and half that output, double it, things like that, and I haven't gotten it to read correctly, so I'm probably just going to end up going with a digital dash or writing my own code for the TACO output specifically. But it does read the correct TACO output in the actual ECU itself and on a laptop and all those goodies. And then the individual throttle bodies themselves sound really, really, really good. The engine itself, a little bit of a ticky mess, but it's hard to pass up this sound. It sounds amazing, honestly. And it improves the throttle response by like 10, 15%, just exponential amounts. I didn't have enough time to take apart the ITBs that are currently on my car and finish working on the intake plenum that I've been trying to work on, but I do have this set of GSXR 750 ITBs that I've already taken apart that I, that I purchased off of eBay for about, oh, a hundred bucks or so, and I figured that this would be a good demonstration to show you guys how exactly everything is mounted on this set of ITBs, just as kind of an example. So, this side right here would be the side that is facing 
the engine currently, and the opposite side would be the side that's facing the velocity stacks. I'm not 100% certain what the diameter of these intake runners is. I'll measure it with a caliper and put it below in the description just so you guys know. And then on the opposite side, we have the side that would have the little aluminum piece, essentially, that we saw that was adapting it to the uh, PX600 base plate. I'm not 100% positive what, like, mounting mechanism that aluminum piece uses. There seems to be sort of a little lip on all of these intake runners. And once I finish taking mine apart, I'll figure it out and figure out what exactly was done to mine to get that kind of setup to work. But I figured I would still show you guys from this video what exactly these ITBs look like. And another unique thing about GSXR ITBs is that they have, it's well, it's kind of hard to see, but they actually have two throttle um, throttle plates essentially in each intake runner. The throttle plates, the secondary throttle plates, are taken out of these ITBs, and they essentially have like a uh, like a secondary motor called the S. STVAA or something along those lines, and uh, obviously a secondary throttle thingy, but you really don't need to use that on this kind of setup. I'm not using it on my setup, and it works perfectly fine, although it would be really interesting to try and use this as a sort of like idle control mechanism. If you had second throttle plates, you might be able to change how much air is actually coming into the engine slightly different, I don't know, maybe with like a finer tuned resolution just because you have two. I'm not 100% certain, but it could be something interesting to mess around with. And then these are all of the GSXR um, injector holes, along with the stock GSXR fuel rail mounting screw holes. I'm not using those on my setup, but you could for sure wire them up for more fuel, and then have eight injectors on a Miata, essentially, which would be pretty damn badass. And then... Right over here, which was somewhat hard to see in the car, we have the throttle position sensor that's mounted on the, the main throttle plates. It's just a uh, regular 3-pin three three 5 volt throttle position sensor, GSXR. They're super easy, and if you purchase these individual throttle bodies off of eBay, then you'll be able to at least hopefully find a set that has one of these attached to it already, because that's what I was able to do. Along with that, you can see the vacuum lines that are a little bit easier to see here. It's basically one port for each intake runner, which gives you a little bit better vacuum signal. That way it's not pulsing as much, essentially. I took the ITPs apart a little bit further, and it looks like it's a press-fit aluminum CNC adapter piece that adapts it to the 48 IDA Weber velocity stacks. I'm going to work myself on seeing if I can make this piece maybe 3D printed out of some sort of material. But overall, it'd be pretty simple if you guys wanted to take the dimensions that I've got in the description and further make your own piece. <laughs>